The question of what happens if Mr. Chavez is unable to get up out of his hospital and come back and govern with some uh, effectiveness is a very interesting one because it has several ramifications. The first and immediate one is a constitutional crisis. Are there elections? Will the vice president take over? Will the House take over? And so on. The Supreme Court, which is also in the hands of the Chavez government and politically pliable, has declared that Mr. Chavez does not have to be inaugurated and on January 10th, as he was supposed to by the Constitution, but that the inauguration can be delayed to allow for Mr. Chavez's recuperation. That's in the short term. In the mid to long term, things get more interesting because Chavez's popular base is secured through an ongoing generous subsidy program to people in poor neighborhoods. Housing subsidies, uh, direct gifts of housing appliances like washing machines. Mr. Chavez's movement distributed close to a million washing machines in Venezuela during the campaign. Uh, that, that's a lot of clothes being washed in his honor. Um, so that flow of money is slowing down. In the long term, the question is, can you have Chavismo without Chavez? My answer is no. Neither Maduro, nor Cabello, nor any of the others around them has the charisma nor the intelligence to create a strategic plan to, to uh, continue running a country like Venezuela. So unless Chavez indeed does recuperate and return to govern, we can expect that after the next six months, we'll begin to see a decline in the efficiency of the government. It's already inefficient, corrupt. Inflation will begin to rise from its already high level as the second highest in Latin America, and the, the country will approach the abyss of ungovernable. At that time, we can expect, as the Chinese are fond of saying, interesting times in Venezuela.